What's going on, podcast? We got Manny Singh Pawa. He's a natural bodybuilder that I myself competed against in summer of 2018 in Fresno, California. He's been a supportive Skull Bells customer and very much appreciated referral source for other Skull Bells sales. So thank you again, sir. We've My been pleasure. encouraging each other, pushing each other ever since, and it's been exciting watching his physique grow and improve, even if it couldn't have gotten any better. Um, <laughs> Last achievements of having taken third place in men's open bodybuilding at the INBF Natural Central Valley on August 21st, 2022. You can follow this guy on Instagram at SupaManny. We're going to put a link to that in the description. And you can also check out his YouTube channel at Manny Singh Fitness. That's M A N N Y S I N G H Fitness. All right. We'll put that to you. Welcome to the. Okay. No, I'm uh, I'm glad to be here, man. And I hope you were just joking that there's, uh, you know, I couldn't get any much better because I'm definitely looking at a lot of improvements to make, you know, I eventually want to get onto that world stage at some point. So a lot of work to do, but, uh, but we're started. We've already well, started. So that's good. And what I love about your physique is you can look back and go, you didn't leave any, you didn't leave any stones unturned. It's like you're, you're symmetrical. Your posing is freaking awesome. And your 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 conditioning, your symmetry. I mean, everything else is there. The only missing component to that you and I both <clears throat> a pro is just about ten years of building muscle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, for us taller guys, you know, I'm six three, and I believe you're around the same height, right? And All about an inch shorter. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge, but um, you know, considering uh, just from the last time we met. You know, when I was on stage with you and back in 18, I was 190 on stage and I was doing physique at that point. Um, you know, you did bodybuilding and physique at that show, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I did classic and physique. I won classic and I think you beat me in men's physique. I, I don't I don't remember too far, uh, too much of that one. I I'm not sure. I, you may be correct. It's just been a while. And it's just, you know, um, we'll have to pull up the records and go find out now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know I was I was very disappointed for sure at that one, mainly because um, for two things, um, you know, uh, at that point, I was already kind of getting over doing physique because I really wanted to start pursuing bodybuilding. And I believe uh, about a month, no, about two weeks later after that show I had my first classic physique show in the NPC where you know I didn't place which was okay but it was more I wanted to see what was so different in terms of um, you know not just judging wise but also the mentality the difference and you know the athlete interaction uh, because uh, as much as we would like to say all athletes are the same there is a difference in pedigree I feel like, you know, it's a little bit more intense when it comes to anything bodybuilding related because it's a bigger room of uh, competitors. You know, everyone's bigger, everyone's leaner. It's just a, it, it feels like a completely different um, competition than a physique competition. And the physique has its own difficulties and everything, you know, so no knock on that. Um, I just so happen to really, um, you know, even before I started lifting, you mentioned symmetry. Um, you know, uh, I, I loved watching Arnold and I loved watching Dorian and, you know, even though later years Dorian did start to end up getting, you know, a little bit out of shape and that was due to a lot of injuries and everything. But if you look at the beginning and even people like Flex Wheeler, even people like, um, you know, Ronnie at the very beginning, very symmetrical. It's just, uh, um, it's one of those things I remember. Arnold used to say, you know, like uh, you're painting or you're creating a masterpiece for to show off to the world. And that always stuck with me even before I started lifting. Um, and so, you know, symmetry is definitely a huge thing for me. I don't want to ever lose that. Um, and then just slowly build muscle on it. And like you mentioned, for taller guys, we have bigger frames. Um, and and it's even a little worse if you have even longer limbs, right? Like I'm 6'3", but my wingspan is 6'6". Six, six. I have a swimmer's, you know, uh, genetics. So it's a little bit hard to fill out 
some of the parts like my arms and everything that I do want to fill out. But um, but the cool thing is I do have a plan and set. Um, you know, as I mentioned, this is I just competed last month. Uh, in three days, it'll be one full month. And uh, literally after the show ended, you know, I messaged my coach. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm ready. Let's let's go ahead and just start the off season. And I want to really pursue going to the worlds, you know. Um, so the goal right now is 2024, 2025 is going to be a full on bodybuilding season. Nice. That, that's so, yeah. sweet, man, you get you're giving yourself time. You're doing it right. You know, yeah. That muscle just takes time to build. And uh, especially for us taller frame guys, you know, it's annoying when you see like these people with, um, with shorter muscle bellies, like my wife, man, it's like her genetics is, is just like, I would kill for leg genetics like that. But, <laughs> you know, we're all, it's like, it's like being dealt different hands of cards. And it's like, okay, yeah. what do us tall guys have? Like when it comes to a pose down, you know, we can tower over some of the shorter guys. It's just like, don't you dare throw a single bicep pose or you get your ass kicked by some, by, by one of those shorter guys with the thicker muscle bellies. So. Yeah. And, and you know what, what surprised me was like, I went into my latest competition with the same type of thing where, man, like I just look long and stringy, right? Because we're so tall and the shorter guys are always going to look a lot more compact. And so, um, but when I actually did come to the poses and everything, and I've rewatched the videos and you could see, um, you know, the pictures I have on my Instagram, I, I thought, you know, be, I, I think being tall actually creates the illusion of being bigger. Now, that also comes down to that's why we want to fill in that frame because we, we do look bigger, but we also want to look more dense. And I think yeah. density is such an overlooked thing that someone just thinks oh you know I have a 18 inch bicep and I have this and I have this and then they go up on stage and then they turn around and they hit the back pose they may be wide their back may be big but if it doesn't have that density that look to it you know it doesn't matter you're short you're you're tall it's just not going to win yeah I like and, the way I like the way that you twist at the waist when you do your back pose and you can yeah. see that you can see that you're not slacking in any area you're training, like your front delts pop over the top, you know, you got the angle down, you got the elbows up and everything, which is like one of the hardest things to teach, but you're, I, I one of the things that I really, really admire your style of training and the way you present yourself is the artistic aspect that you have to it. Well, I appreciate that, man. Uh, as I mentioned, like I, my main motivation, you know, for bodybuilding in general was watching those golden era guys and presenting that masterpiece that that painting you've been working on to the audience, because I feel like, you know, uh, although the sport of bodybuilding in, in the open has changed, right? Like, uh, at least in the NPC, it's more about the freak factor. But that's also why we're lucky and why everyone loves a classic physique is because they brought that aspect back where it's not the biggest and the freakiest guy winning. It's the guy who looks the most eye appealing. It's, it's that uh, body that you want to have, not the one you can't say, man, that's crazy. That's something that we won't see anywhere else, right? That's the freak factor. But with the classic physique, it's like, man, that's, that's I want to look like that. And so that's more what I... Yeah, exactly. And so when I would watch like, you know, um, Arnold and them, and, and this is even before I was fit or anything, because I was very fat at the beginning, you know, um, I, w I grew up as a fatty kid, <laughs> you know, eating everything, all the candy and everything. My grandpa had spoiled me growing up. And then um, in high school, I got in shape because I played basketball and I loved basketball. But then I remember my junior year, we had moved um, from the house we were renting. My family had moved out and we had to move to a secluded uh, apartment complex. And all my friends and everyone that I used to play outside with, I didn't have anymore. So I really fell off. You know, I went from, I went back to being an unhealthy, obese guy you know 
I grew up very obese. And then I had one, one and a half year where I was very, um, you know, athletic field type of thing, you know, playing basketball. And then my senior year, by the end of my high school graduation, I was 250. And not in a good way either. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I think, uh, you know, when I went to Fresno State and I discovered they have an indoor basketball facility, you know, um, I lost a lot of weight. I, I think I fell down to probably like 180, I think at that time, no weight training, nothing, just a lot of cardio. And, uh, and then I ran into my friends that, you know, I met at the gym and I'm like, man, like these guys, like they look cool. And then um, they got me into weightlifting and obviously a lot of trial and error from there, right? Like, you know, dirty bulk, uh, extreme cuts, um, a lot of things along these years where it's just a lot of learning. And I think that's something a lot of people run away from is learning. Um, uh, give it a try, you know, if don't speculate, like actually give it a try. Like, you know, a lot of people will be, oh no, I heard that that doesn't work. Oh, I read that that doesn't work. Okay, well, maybe not for them. Why don't you try and then see if it works for you, right? That's what bodybuilding is. It is a lot of trial and error. If, if a certain exercise is not showing you the results you want, what do you do? You change that exercise. If a certain diet isn't working for you, what do you do? You change that diet. And I don't think you could get that knowledge from just reading anything right like I understand there's scientific articles and everything but even science isn't always 100% right right like you could use it as a reference as a guidance tool but don't use it as a definitive factor yeah you know it's 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 so scientific studies can be so helpful but there's things like like spot reducing fat I think that's the biggest thing it's like there's no science that proves that it actually works but any bodybuilder that has actually gotten their their body like they've got every bit of fat um, burnt off where they, where, where it was, where it was stubborn. And they, you know, they, they really got that physique that they really, really wanted in that one in that pro card. I mean, it takes, it takes a lot of <clears throat> tricks and things that science just really can't prove. Like my, like my guy Lawrence right now, I'm having him do the same thing I was doing before my shows, which is to, to get the glute striations to come out and to get those lower ab things. I mean, I was, I was doing a lot of spot reducing fat. I was using vasoburn. You probably use vasoburn, right? You've heard of it. Uh, no, I've never used that. Oh, you, you don't use it, huh? Well, um, yeah. So it, it's, it's a Pacific Northwest um, local, local business. So it's, I guess it's mostly people in my area that use it, but um, it's a, it's a topical that you put on wherever your stubborn um, like belly fat is or, or, or glutes or love handles or just kind of wherever it is. And uh, before you start, you work out, you do a whole bunch of high reps in just that area and it, and, and you can feel it burn like it's hot and, and it gets, and it gets super sweaty and it retains a bunch of water too. So like, it actually looks fatter by the time that you're done. And like my mm. skin always mm. super puffy at the end of a workout, but then like a day later after hitting the sauna, then I could see a difference. And when you get to those low extreme levels of body fat, I mean, um, there's, there, there's some things that science just really can't explain and can't even really, yeah. but like we, we do it because we, either we know it works or hey maybe it just maybe maybe it's just a placebo and like you feel like it's burning and you feel like it's working and it just like makes you train that much harder and that's what got you there but i don't know man something something either way you're benefiting (laughs) off of it that's all that matters are you getting your money's worth yes all right then proceed yeah that's good people are like they're like oh yeah no i I get the best pump off of these bcaas and i'm like dude BCAs don't give you a pump, but like you're, you're pumped because you're hydrated, you know? And if you, if you, if you think it's giving you a pump, like you're, you're drinking water, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To each their own, man. I don't like, I mean, obviously if, unless someone's making like a really out of the world type of claim, like, you know, this product will guarantee you to lose only fat or this, I I'm like, okay, you know, cause at the end of the day, cold, I feel like especially nowadays, it's like everyone is so uh, caught into social media when it comes to these type of things. It's like, it's so hard to explain them. So I'd rather just like, I just, okay, you know, I support them. Mm -hmm. And then I let them go ahead and go through their own trial and error. And 
learn it from the for themselves you know are they are they wasting a hundred dollars uh, a month on something that they don't need um you know obviously if they can uh, keep on affording to do it and it's working for them hey great but i know i don't need to spend that hundred dollars on that because i know already uh even if it's a placebo thing i already don't believe in the placebo so it's not going to work for me right so it's like yeah. So that that's the thing. Um, before, I, before I hired a coach, man, and, and 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 I and I knew like what to believe and what not to believe. Like, <clears throat> I was like, well, I guess I can't hurt, and maybe it'll give me one percent better. Maybe this will give me one percent better. So I was taking like um, laxagenin and uh, epicatechin, the myostatin inhibitor, you know, and, and and like you would you would hear these YouTube videos and read these articles, like the stuff like it was anabolic or it could like help, help you retain muscle better. Just like anything that was like natural or plant-based not on the banned substance list. I'm like, is it on the banned substance list? No, I'm taking it. And like for I was, I was spending three or $400 a month just in supplement. I don't think any of them worked. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's fine. I, I've done something like to like that as well. I've taken, I remember there was a powder, I forget what the name of it was, but essentially it was supposed to make your IGF factor higher. So, you know, your growth mo- uh, growth hormone um, production is supposed to be higher. It, it was a booster, not necessarily itself. It was an enhanced. Uh, like maca root or ashwagandha? Or... No, I'm trying to think of it, but... Because ashwagandha, I think, is legit. That has some science behind it. Maca root, that stuff tastes gross. And I was taking a ton of that stuff, and I, I don't think... <laughs> but I, I know I was wasting like sixty dollars every month on that, and a few things here and there that I thought for the same exact reason as you. You know, you hear so much hype around these products, and then you think they're working, and you know, ultimately find out they don't. <laughs> you know, because uh, I feel like a lot of that stuff where they're saying, you know, the, the testosterone and all that stuff. Um. If it really was legit, I don't think it would be on the on on the shelves, you know, because it is uh, uh, it is a scheduled drug, and that's why you actually need prescription for a lot of that stuff. Um, so that that's but that comes with knowledge that you learn through your own stages. So absolutely, and if it, and if it really was that good, then everybody would be taking it, and if not everybody's taking it, then you know, what is, what is everybody taking creatine? Everybody's taking creatine oh, yeah, that, because it works. <laughs> yeah, that, that is, uh, I think it's the most uh, researched um, uh, supplement and that's shown to be actually very effective. Mm-hmm. What type of creatine do you take? Uh, I just take the monohydrate. I mm-hmm. don't think, uh, Adam, I mean, I personally just haven't found anything. I know and this goes back to the whole trends thing again. You know, they come out with these nitrates, and these all these different fancy words, uh, creatine hydrochloride, you know, HCl, and all that stuff. And I've heard really good. Thing, yeah, I got a, I got a, a buddy of mine that swears by HCl. Um, personally, my, my coach got me Alfred. You know Alfred Robbins, right? Uh, if he's your coach, I've seen his, uh, videos or pictures with yeah. you before, but yeah, black, black Muslim guy. Um, yeah, yeah. He got, he got me on creatine glycerol phosphate and, and, and again, science doesn't really show the differences, but man, like I, I take monohydrate and I take this side by side and like, like one week of this, one week of this and the glycerol phosphate, I, I, I look leaner and drier and, and more explosive energy. So yeah, hey, maybe your body responds to it better maybe. than the some people's do. bodies don't even respond to creatine at all. There's a very, there's a, a very yeah. group of like five percent of people that their creatine levels are already saturated, and so it's like oh, it sucks for you guys. <laughs> yeah, and, and so like I mean, for me, I've tried these different ones, and they've all just had the same effect. Because at the end of the day, their base product creatine is the same, mm-hmm. and it's just you know I I just by mine i'm also very cost effective like i i care about the cost effectiveness yeah and i buy the big old tub from amazon from um optimum nutrition the micronized creatine mm-hmm. and i buy that for like 40 bucks and that lasts me 
and I take five grams a day. I think that thing lasts me like 10 months at a time. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, that's so cheap. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think there are some supplements that do work. Um, some that the science can't explain yet because I feel like the science is not just science, but in general, you can't, um, you can't generalize, uh, you know, a product for everyone's body, right? Like we're all so genetically different. Um, I feel like so that's why you have some people that respond differently to certain medication, to certain uh, drugs, to certain supplements, anything like that. Absolutely. Uh, what got you into bodybuilding in the first place, bro? Why did you decide to start competing? Well, competing or bodybuilding bodybuilding was more because i mentioned those friends that i ran into playing basketball um they really i you know you grow up idolizing right like i wanted to my my idol growing up or any of that i love superheroes right and i'm a big comic book anime guy and um superman dude like you know i was you grow up with that mental uh image of what strong looks like right uh to me when i thought of strong looking strong i thought of like you know superman and all this and then i met my buddies that were into weightlifting and they obviously had phenomenal physiques and i asked them you know hey can you guys help me out uh and at that point uh as i mentioned earlier um i had lost a lot of fat so i was very very skinny and uh uh, I know I, I knew I wanted to start building muscle. I wanted to start working out. So the good thing was I had a good support group from the very beginning um, that kept me in check, um, that trained me the right way. And then uh, in terms of competing, actually back in my first show, uh, I, which was also Terry's show, um, back in 16, I did my first physique competition. And that was out of pure just uh, self-motivation, you know, because um, I started lifting and I had finally started to like actually started to look like I, I lift. And so I was like, okay, you know what? I've never had abs before. Um, I want to really get abs, you know, I want to look like how those people look like on the magazines and everything. And uh and I remember at that point, I'm like, okay. And I think this was back in 14. I'm like, okay, 2016, I'm stepping on stage, whatever it is. I'm like, okay. So it was more of a challenge to myself. And then, um, you know, that got me leaner. Uh, and I enjoyed the experience I had gotten from there. And so once I got that experience, I, I wanted more. And I wanted to start dedicating more to it. And uh uh, especially after I graduated, you know, from my, um, with my bachelor's, I had more time in my hands in terms of, you know, there's no more homework, there's none of this. Okay, now it's time to commit to the sport of bodybuilding. And, uh, and as I mentioned, then in 18, I competed alongside you. And uh, seeing you guys have fun in bodybuilding, like, I, I really wanted to switch over to bodybuilding. And then, uh, you know, uh, Arnold and all these guys, they always did bodybuilding. And even before I did bodybuilding, we were talking about posing earlier. You talked about um, the posing that I keep and everything for the flow. Um, even before I had any muscle, you know, I, I posed like how Arnold did them pose, right? Like, because that was just really cool to me how it was. And so uh, slowly, as I started to continue to build muscle and I started to hit those poses, I started to really like those poses even more because I was starting to feel like my idols, you know, I was starting to feel like, man, this is, this is cool. Like, this is how he was doing it. This is how he was doing it. And then, um, so even though I loved physique, I knew my passion was in bodybuilding because uh, of the posing and of all the other attributes that come with it. So that made me uh, finally make that transition. I felt like this was a good year because since the last time I competed, it had been three years. 
and I felt like I had a more complete package this time around. And uh, I knew I wasn't going to, although my coach and I, we were like, I was really, really trying to push to at least become a pro um, this year and then take time off. But even though I didn't become a WNBF pro, I'm still taking the time off regardless. Um, And then uh, 2024, 2025, and this time with a coach that I can rely on uh, that that relates to me because the previous two shows the first show I did self-coached and that's the one in 16 I got first place in novice and third place overall um I was 180 on stage I was flat I was very hungry I was very dehydrated um obviously didn't know what the hell I was doing all I knew was people don't eat and people don't drink (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right during that peak week so that's exactly what I did I just I ate so little and I drank uh, a lot less water than I should have um, and then so that led to a really really dry and really shredded physique but at the same time it also left me looking bony up on stage right and uh, because I am 6'3 and 180 mixed with 6'3 just doesn't look right um so in the, uh when I competed alongside with you in the 18 um I had Wesley Visitors um uh, be my coach whose physique I also very much admire and his posing he's an NPC uh and he actually taught me a lot of stuff too right and it was cool because here's the dude that's you know known around the world but I think it's also because I was uh, probably one of his uh um uh one of his uh, athletes before he blew up everywhere, right? So I got him for a pretty good price. And yeah, and so he gave me his, uh, you know, uh, WhatsApp and everything. So we were able to chat back and forth, even though he's in the Netherlands. It was a more personal connection rather than emails. I'm sure like a lot of the big big time guys have nowadays, right? They have a team, coaching team rather than themselves. Um, So he was able to teach me a lot. and I was happy with the physique I had on stage. But it's crazy to think that I weighed the same exact weight this year on stage as I did in the 18. Yet I looked much sharper, much bigger. Yeah. And and that just that's because of the lean muscle mass I've gained in the past three years. That's like, OK, so I barely like I know they talk about this whole window you know, of uh, how much you could gain naturally and everything. Although I would like to dispute that only because I fully agree that once you first start is like when you have your biggest jump, right? But the constant uh, building, I don't think it stops unless your body, you know, just like any supplement, right? If you keep taking the same thing, same thing, same thing, eventually your body's going to be like, hey, man, like we're used to this dose, (laughs) right? We need more. We need to eat more. We need this more. You can't, you know, you eventually have to up your your cachet, right? Like whatever you're providing it. And I and I take the same approach with uh, when it comes to training, right? So if you're going to, for example, if you train the same way your whole career, of course, you're going to get minimal gains from it because although you're utilizing the muscle, You're not pushing it with the shocking that because a lot of people don't understand, like even when people just get on testosterone or anything like that, all those hormones, their primary factor for growth, and it's the same thing when you're natural, is recovery, right? That is recovery is when growth happens, not when you're working out, but rather when you're recovering. So what do those hormones and everything, you know, let's just take testosterone as a single soul hormone. Say someone's on testosterone. What's that doing is it's it's, uh, maximizing their protein synthesis, right? How fast the protein, how much protein is absorbed for the muscle repair done in the gym. And then that happens, but that doesn't happen. Um, None of that happens until your autonomic, autonomic system is in place. The autonomic system is your rest and digest it's it's what happens when you're 
physically inactive most of the time when you're sleeping, right? That's why your body is burning so many cal calories is because it's regulating everything that needs to be regulated. And so if you were to just take that mindset, if you were to just take that one uh, ge uh, generic description, now you apply to natural bodybuilding. And once again, unless you're a genetic freak, which there are some people, your recovery is never going to be at the pace of someone who is not natural, right? If you're on testosterone, if you're using anything extra, obviously it's going to provide that extra boost. But naturally, you could still maximize your gains if you were to switch up, you know, your, okay, how do you train? Are you, have you been training the same way? Have you been training, um, you know, maybe your dieting? Have you tried to switch up to your diet? Have you tried to, um, you know, change maybe your sleeping pattern? You know, maybe sleeping from 12 to 7 isn't the best. Maybe, you know, sleeping from 10 to 5 is better for you, right? Like when you're home, because everyone's body reacts differently. That's why some people can do better at night. Some people can do better in the morning. So it's like these little things. So when it comes to recovery, how much are you focusing on their recovery, right? Like some people, they train so hard, um, they break their bodies down so much. And when their body is actually trying to recover at night, they're not, they don't have that extra recovery uh, additive like a testosterone would, right? So you really have to keep in mind, you could train hard. You could very much train hard. But you have to train hard enough to where your muscle is actually able to recuperate. You can't go to the point. That's why injuries happen. That's why you think if you could keep competing next to a guy that's enhanced, and if you keep on doing, yeah, you may be as strong as him. You may be, you know, able to do everything he does. But I guarantee you, like, you're going to wake up tomorrow feeling like you broke your body down. He's going to wake up tomorrow morning like he's ready to go again, right? Because yeah. that's that's where growth happens. So um, so naturally, I feel like if you were to go ahead and continuously provide your body with like different methods, I feel like uh, you could you could for sure keep growing your your muscle every year because you're not going to hit that stagnant point where you're that's why progressive overload is a thing. And most recently, um, one of the best things changes I made to my training has been um, RPE, uh, incorporating, um, you know, how much, how many more reps I left in the tank, because a lot of people, they, they misunderstand that. The way they misunderstand that is, how can you say you're working out hard if, you know, you're leaving three more reps in your tank, you're leaving this many reps in your tank. But what they don't realize is that, you're doing a progressive overload. So basically pretend this. So for a month, right? Let's say the way you have your setup is one week. The first week you're gonna leave five, six reps in the tank, which is a deload week, right? That's just a week where you're going for the pump, not necessarily the intensity. So more volume, less intensity. Second week, you're leaving three to four in the tank. Then there's two to three in the tank. Uh, and then on the final week, you're only leaving maybe one in the tank, right? Now, uh, a lot of people were like, oh, man, you could have worked out so much harder on all those. What if you just went to, you know, balls to the walls on all of them? Okay, but progressive overload. So that first month, let's say when you did that, you know, leaving two in the tank, you had hit 240, 245 on your bench, right? That was your max weight of leaving two in the tank. The next month, when you're at leaving those two in the tank, now you do 250, 255, right? Now you're getting stronger. You're doing a progressive overload. You're working out hard just like you should because if you don't see that progress, what, what you're allowing, allowing with these RPEs is your body to really... Um, so you're not, again, pushing it past its limits every day because you can't recover from that. You really can't. I don't care like how hard you say, man, I'd, 
you know, I'm going to, yeah, but you will hit that plateau. That's why power lifters, you know, I, I'm fortunate uh, at my gym. Um, I have my friend, John Denkaiko. He's number one in the world, right? World champion and drug tested uh, federation where the WADA actually does randomized drug testing. They could come to your house. They could come to your work. If you're, yeah, if you're wow. in a, a yeah, if you're an elite uh, lifter, meaning you're in, you know, top five, top 10, I think, in the world, um, you have to sign a contract that gives them the right to randomly drug test you at any moment. There's no, there's no escaping. It, it, right. A lot, and, and, it, and like, a lot of these drug tested natural shit, it's like, man, like, there, like there's so many loopholes and it's, and it's like the, the guy wins and you look at him and you're like... I guess I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt because if I accuse them of anything, then what does that gain me anyway? Even if I'm right, yeah. you know, it's like, let's just assume that everybody's honest. And if they, yeah, and, if they're not, then they have to live with it. <laughs> yeah. And, and so that, and so that's really cool. And I'm fortunate to be around these guys. And some of these guys are just like, not just, you know, I feel like there's a bad reputation. Maybe the older generation had of power lifters where everyone when you think of powerlifting, you look, you immediately, these images on Google come up with these people that are out of shape or whatever. They're not aesthetically pleasing, but you look at the new generation, right? You look yeah. at the, even the guys that are not natural, like Larry Wheels, uh, very impressive, right? For, especially for someone to be that lean and be that strong. And then even in the natural ones, my buddy, Jonathan Kaiko, you know, and he used to bodybuild at one point and before he's transitioned to powerlifting and he's actually going to be competing in the world, um, uh, in the world competition next week where he's going to break his own world record. You know, he currently owns, owns the world record in bench or, or unofficial world record in bench that wow. he's going to make official. Um, I mean, he's a, you know, 93 kg and his overall for a squad deadlift and bench is going to be 2000. You know how insane that is to be able to bench more than 500, to be able to deadlift almost a thousand, to be squatting, you know, 700 naturally. A lot of people would say, man, he's on something. He's on this, he's on this. Even though he's tested randomly by the official world anti-doping uh, agency, right? WADA is like the biggest agency. And, um, but it's because the approach that a lot of these powerlifters have, um, it is progressive overload, but it's just differently to where they're not burning out their body to the point where it's broken down for the next time they try something. So. And, 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 and people are so, as <clears throat> First thing they do is they point out, oh, he's on gear. Oh, he's on gear. Oh, he's probably taking this. Oh, he's probably taking that. Oh, he's probably not natty because of this. And it's like, as if that, as if even if they did, if that would take away the, the training that they put in in the first place, you know, it's like, yeah. you sit on the couch and you take all the stuff you're accusing them of taking and we'll see what happens to you. You're going to look the same. Maybe you'll look, maybe you'll be a bit bigger, but you'll be fatter too. Like, yeah, it, 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 it doesn't replace the work that these athletes are putting in first place. yeah it, it, you obviously have to have that determination and that drive and um but yeah it, it's it's definitely you know the changing in the training and i think that's really essentially what's changed for me a lot and since i made that transition um my body you know you saw those my numbers flew and i was on the cut cold I was cutting down at my, my number. Yeah, it, it just proves that we were talking about Greg Doucette before we started recording. And, and you, you don't you don't need a calorie surplus to build muscle. You don't. No, no. You just need a right Stimulus, rest, training. Water. Yep. There you go. There Protein. you go. <laughs> Protein. Protein. There we go. And um, so, yeah, it's whatever you have for that. Like, just change it up. And that's going to whatever can help you with those three, right? Training, sleep, and recovery, or well, and nutrition, I would say, because- Harder to do in a calorie like deficit. What's that? Harder to do in a calorie deficit. Yeah, but still possible because it's like, until you reach the point where you don't have enough fat around you, where you're, now your body is going to start utilizing the muscle, 
that's a different story but i don't think anyone gets that lean enough anyway so right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and, the, and those dirty but we were talking about this before we started recording too and so I'm, i'd like to revisit that a little bit because i think what you said was was really really valuable you were giving some specific mm-hmm. how much you weigh where your sweet spot is and everything you know like my goal as a business owner as a coach is be, is being my own business card right so i want to so so i'm training the way that my athletes are training and i'm like I didn't want to do my cardio yesterday. And I thought about the amount of cardio that, um, that, that, that Lawrence is doing, getting ready for his first show, you know, he's in the best shape of his life and he's trying to make weight to, to, to get, to be in the, in the lightweight class. And I'm just like, man, like, okay, I can do my 20 minutes of stair stepper today and not bitch about it anymore, you know? Um, but there's a, there, there's, um, a level of body fat where, um, everybody, this is different for everybody, but there's a level of body fat where you're hormonally optimized to, um, be the, Form. to function the best, to have the best cognitive ability, um, to perform the best and, uh, just everyday mobility, everyday tasks. That's the healthiest version of you. And if you go too far below that, you just feel miserable all the time. And that's not healthy for you. And if you're too high above that, then you actually have lower testosterone. And you, you know, obviously being uh, too heavy isn't a good thing either. So there's a sweet spot, um, but there's also a psychological component too. And if like, and if you look in the mirror and you don't like how you look, um, then then maybe being a little bit leaner, if it's not technically on paper, um, a healthier approach, maybe you just are more confident because you look better and that confidence carries over to that's actually been scientifically shown to improve testosterone. Yeah. I can't, I can't cite the study, but I remember hearing that it was scientifically proven. <laughs> so, yeah. You. And <laughs> yeah, I fully agree because I could personally uh, relate to that because, uh, you know, when I was 250 before I started training, when I was just fat, um, and then I lost a lot of weight. And then I mentioned I met my friends and then we started training. And that's also when I tried this whole dirty bulk. I'm like, man, so you're telling me I could eat whatever I want. <laughs> and as long as I work out, like I'm good. I'm gaining muscle, right? Pounds go up, meaning the muscles go up, right? That's yeah. what everyone's, especially at the very beginning, that's what everyone's. Uh, yeah, and you're like eating ramen to. noodles and stuff and just covering it in oil and just like eating peanuts all the time and just like anything, yeah. grab this calorie dance and the, like, yeah, I gained a pound. Great. You know, it's like, ah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, it, and I mean, I wish it was as simple as that, uh, but it's, it's not. And I remember going back up to 250 pounds, um, uh, you know, on this bulk and as much as I, I mean, I looked different, right? Like my body composition was different than the 250 pounds I was before I started lifting, obviously. Um, but 250 pounds is 250 pounds. And I remember, uh, wearing my shirts and everything and it it feels cool to fill it out, you know, and, um, I was lifting very heavy. I think I was lifting like, you know, I think it was the first time I went over 500 on my dads, um, went over, uh, 400 on my squats and, um, still had not hit 300 pounds on my bench because of so many shoulder injuries I've had in the past playing basketball or whatever. Yeah. Maybe. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So it sounds like <clears throat> similar in, in all of our numbers here. So, um, all right. What are you pulling these days, my man? What, what's your, in, in, in your prime, obviously you're, you're a month out of a show, so you're not, you're, you're strongest or, or, or are you, how are you feeling right now? Oh, I am barely bouncing back. Um, I have not been able to deliver the past three months because of uh, the lean out phase I was having for my show. Oh, it's traumatizing. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I could say earlier this year, um, I think back in February, uh, the best weight I've pulled at my lightest weight, I think I was, I think I was 215. And I had pulled uh, 535, 535. Are you kidding me? That's that's my record. That's the most I've ever pulled for one rep is exactly 535 pounds. Yeah. And uh, which was crazy to me because 535, you know, I was mentioning when I was 250, I was getting stronger. I got to that point. But at the same time, it's not very impressive for a 250 guy uh to be hitting the numbers i was hitting but because i was hitting those numbers i was happy but at the same time anytime i took off my shirt 
anytime I did anything else, you know, it was, uh, it really brought me down because I'm like, man, like, what did I do? You know, like I gained so much fat. And so I knew that I had to go ahead and get back to holding myself accountable, which is why like in the 18, I competed again. And, uh, but, um, you know, with the training now and the fact that I was making so many uh, strength and muscle building gains on my cut with my coach, I'm actually, um, our plan is to, uh, I mean, he's, he's, he's very realistic as well. So that's what gives me even more hope. Um, we're going to hit at least, you know, six place on the list. We're going to hit at least five place on squad and at least three place on bench. Like that is just the beginning of the goals, overall goals, because, um, nice. So we're going to experiment, you know, we're us, us talk guys. Um, we got that leverage for the for, for, for the bigger deadlifts too. So that's always been like yeah. what's your what's your squat? Uh squat, uh again, it's another one that I haven't been able to do, uh, but it's going back in my routine in two weeks where my next block starts. Nice. Uh but the heaviest I ever squatted was uh four fifty-five at the same weight, two fifteen, two sixteen. Uh, you got me on you got me on squat. I mean, about you'll get me guys. on bench trust me you'll get me on bench <laughs> uh back in my prime yeah the best i ever benched was 335 eventually i, I was i was just like what's the point like my my chest is it's, it's not like what i would consider a pro chest by any means but it's like by far my strongest body part like ahead of my shoulders and my triceps and everything else so pretty much all my chest work right now is just uh tricep focused and i don't i don't really ever um bench that yeah yeah, my bench, I think uh, the closest I ever got to 315, I think it was 295. Um, and then uh, now I'm learning it the right way as well, which is also another blessing in disguise for me that I'm restarting on my lifts, um, you know, because right now my body is still about 200 pounds. Um, so I'm slowly bulking back up. Uh to where it could be optimal. I, I, I see that separation in your uh, between <laughs> stuff right now. You got Thank the you no. and everything. You're definitely keeping a lot of that leanness. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I am uh, doing my best. And I, that's the other thing for me is, um, unfortunately, because I grew up fat, uh, you know, you do end up developing fatty muscles. So all my water and all my fat goes straight to my abs first, my abdominal, um, you know, uh, cavity and it kind of sucks because even though I'm only 10 pounds heavier, like you could see, you know, my, my four, although it's not like as lean as it was obviously before, but it just sucks. Like I'm still vascular on my arms and my legs and my back and everything. And my chest, it's just my abs are the first ones to fill up. And, it, but I've come to terms with it, you know, that um, because we are planning to um, experiment with my body, go to 220 where it was optimal before and then slowly progress it to 230 assess the situation how does it feel how does it look and if there's any more room for it maybe push that 240 boundary and i say that as a big maybe because we know for sure we're probably we're going to 230 and the last time i was 240 250 like i mentioned i did not like it at all um but i i'm I've literally given the keys to my coach. I've told him, hey, I'm the car. I'm paying you. You know, I'll be Kobe. You'll be Phil Jackson, you know, stuff like that. It's just, I trust you with it. Just tell me what the game plan is, and I'm not going to question it. Like, I'll ask questions regarding, hey, why, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? But I'm not going to be like, you're wrong, right? <laughs> Uh, he's the coach. I mean, he's a two two time world champion in uh, the WNBF, and so I'm not going to question someone like that and their methods uh, just because I've never tried them before. That's beautiful. But, how much of a how how tight of a relationship you have and the trust that you that that you put in your coach. Uh, when I was being coached by Alfred, um, it was it was the same thing. There were times where I would. I wouldn't outright disobey him, but I would, but I, but I'd be adamant and I'd be like, bro, I, this isn't right for my body or like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. And then he, and then he, you know, what he was, he wasn't arrogant. He had, you know, he had the humility to back and go, 
okay, I'm open to it. What do you think you should do, Colt? And then I would like walk him through, well, I was thinking I would eat this at this time and eat this at this time and, you know, train at this time and then step on stage at this time. And then, and, and then he would be like, okay, let's try it. And, and it was, um, sometimes we do it my way and sometimes we do it his way. And sometimes, you know, it, it would, it wouldn't work. And then he'd be like, yep. Now, what did you learn? I was, I was like, listen to you next time. <laughs> Uh, but overall it was, it, it was nice just having that accountability to put it, to put everything in his hands, you know, and like, especially those last couple of weeks, like I'm just so mentally burnt and fried to, to the point where like, I don't know, up from down, like I forget what my name is <laughs> that last yeah. week or two before a show. And so for him to look at me and, and that, especially that last show in Edmonton is the, is the best I ever looked on stage, but he was but we, we were in the same um, hotel room and we did all of our workouts together, all of our meals together. Cause he, was, he did the same show too. We pumped up together. Yeah. yeah. I think I remember that. Yeah. We, we were attached at the hip for the entire trip and Taylor was there too. And so she was with us. She did, she did, she did my tan. Um, but he would like literally just look at me and be like, um, you need to eat half a sweet potato. Go grab one right now. And I'll eat a sweet potato, you know, and we did that all the way up until the show. And that's, that's, that's what a coaching client relationship should be is it's, yeah it should be open it's, 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 that, it's be, that involved yeah there it's should be like definitely baseball, some respect no offense involved. if you're a baseball player <laughs> oh no uh, baseball is definitely not my thing <laughs> so i want to know about that yeah but yeah man awesome well, cool man uh <clears throat> did, you have, did you have any doubts before this last competition anything that you were nervous about uh doubts uh, you know, I don't think I, to be fully honest with you, I don't think I did because I felt so confident in the work I had been putting in for the past, uh, since 2018. And then I, you know, hired a coach that I immediately got a lot of respect from me. Um, no, I, I, I wouldn't say I had any doubts. I mean, I mean, it's, I already knew the expectations, right? I already knew the people I would be going up against if I'm running for the pro card are going to be these, um, you know, genetically enhanced people that have been training for a while. Um, I mean, and I'm sure they feel the same way about me. I've heard a lot of people say, man, you're, you're genetically gifted with your lats, with your back and stuff like that. We're all genetically gifted in one way or another. So yeah, your your lats are wide. You got you got the you got you got the widespread and the low ends too. It's like that's that's a, that's recipe for classic. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that, man. But yeah, and, and so that's the thing. Like I, I knew that it's it's not going to be easy, and it's going to be full of competition. Everyone's going for the same goal. Um, because I don't think anyone really spends thousands of dollars just to have fun. Um, although everyone says I did it for fun, I just wanted to experience this. I'm sure. I'm sure deep down inside, they would have been very much happier or would have had so much more fun if they got that trophy with them, right? So, <clears throat> um, no, I did not really have any doubts uh, regarding this competition in particular. Awesome. Um, let's see. What's your, what's your favorite pose? Uh, huh. uh, I don't know how to... do describe what it's called but it's definitely my uh front double bicep where i kind of lean to the side it kind of imitate arnold like this yeah there you go just <laughs> like that just like that um that's definitely my favorite one because uh i feel like it's the one post where i can flex all my strengths out at the same time i don't have the best arms but i feel like i have decent arms um but uh, as i mentioned i have a I've, I'm I'm fully aware that my lats are very well placed. So I'm able to showcase that my obliques, and uh, thankfully I also have good quads. So I'm able to really flex, like basically a third of my, you know, not third, half of my body right in front of you, uh, in the fashion I want to show. So I think that that is definitely my favorite pose, uh, if not for the abdominal thigh. Nice. Okay. Yeah, no, you look good in both of those. You, 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 you have Dom over tied too. That, that was a good one. I remember seeing that post. Um, so you're a, a, a vegetarian <clears throat> diet. Um, so do you, do you consume any meats at all? No. Uh, and it's really for two reasons. Um, 
one is cultural, right? Like um, uh, being of my culture, uh, we don't consume meat or anything mm-hmm. like that. Um, not, I, I'm sure there are people in my, there's a lot of people in my culture that do, but I'm more traditional. I don't. Um, and the second thing is I, I just don't crave anything. I, uh, I've and, eaten. And is this, is, is this Sikh or Hindi or? No, it, it's a Sikh. A Sikhism is a religion. Um, and Punjabi is a culture. Oh, okay. Um, you know, that's because we're from Punjab, India. So uh, I've never really had any uh, craving or anything where it's like, oh, you know, I want to try it or I want to have it. So I don't, I'm not one of those people to go out of my way and be like, meat is bad. This is bad. You shouldn't have that. <clears throat> I'm, I'm very much to myself. Like you do your own thing. I respect it. Just because I literally, it. yeah, I did. I literally whole time at noon, I never knew that you're a vegetarian until like literally right before the podcast. And I was like, whoa, this is going to be the first vegetarian that we're going to have on the podcast. And what, but what I love about you is like, you don't wear it as a badge of honor. You know, it's not, no. it's, you know, I talk about my meat diet all the time because it's something like, new that's been working that's been working a lot better than what i did before so i'm super amped about it and i'm excited and i'm excited to share it but um but the can't stand people that thought that like they they have a moral or a cultural reason for doing it and i'm like like i'm I'm happy i'm happy for you great but to throw it at you like the first words that come out of your mouth it's like whoa 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 (laughs) yeah i mean i i think that goes both ways right there's people that make fun of the vegans and vegetarians and then there are the vegans and vegetarians that just go at everyone's throat that this is the best way to live life yeah um that's actually one of the fires i have in me right like i remember when the first show that i was self-coaching i had approached someone locally um who is a coach here in fresno um and i told him i'm like hey you know i'm doing the show can you help me during the peak week, around there, he's like, "Oh, you're a vegetarian, right?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, oh, "I'm sorry, man. You can't cut out the water that you're gonna need to cut out." I'm like, "Like, okay. Like, I'll prove you wrong." And I got first a novice, and I did my <laughs> own thing. And um, but also that's just to this day, you know, it's it's funny because people would be like, "Um, hey, man, you have a really nice physique." I'm like, "Thank you, man." And then they'll find out that I'm a vegetarian vegan. Like, man, just imagine how different or how much better it would be if you ate meat. <laughs> and like, what are you talking about? Like, you know that it's not meat is not some like drug, right? It's it's not going to do anything different. At the end of the day, your body has enzymes, right? It's full of enzymes. It's got three types of enzymes, and this is why I feel like everyone needs to learn nutrition. Your body's got three different types of enzymes. One breaks down fat, one breaks down carbs, and one breaks down protein, right? So when you actually, as long as you're giving your body, um, now this is the most important thing. Most of the people that go and look at vegan or vegetarian diets, they find foods that don't have complete protein. And then therefore judge that you can't get complete protein. Complete protein is necessary. What makes a complete protein is having all amino acids in your protein. So eating meat, that makes it so much easier because everyone's muscle has those, right? And so when it comes to plant-based or just vegetarian in general, uh, I mean, dairy is you know, that's, that's from, that's obviously complete protein that comes from an animal. Um, But plant-based foods in general, you really have to, uh, and this is the other cool thing is like, I enjoy researching, right? I've told you, I love the trial and error aspect. And so I really, the diet I have today is my own diet that, uh, you know, mainly of foods that I discovered or recipes that I make to make sure I have the complete protein at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And if I were to tell you my macros. Uh, that was my next question. I'm dying. 
Yeah. Uh, let me actually pull up my macros. You want my latest currently? Um, yeah, just like um, what 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 is what it's like when you're you know at your best, feeling your best. Maybe not like peak week or something. And hey, if you're open to sharing that too, I'd be really curious to see what that looks like. Yeah. So right now I'm consuming 250 grams of protein, 74 grams fats, and 310 grams carbs, and that's my right now diet. Yes. Wow. And those numbers are very comparable to someone who's not vegetarian, right? So you, have like, a, you have a good metabolism then. And you really did it right. Like you, it doesn't sound like you starved yourself or anything on this. On no, this no. How good stuff. Um, but even when I was cutting, right? Like people, that's the main thing. People worry about, oh, the protein. Oh, this. Oh, that. You know, how are you getting all this? Well, I don't, I, even, know I, how, I don't even know how it's possible, to be honest, to get that much protein. Oh, it's very much possible, man. It's the thing is, I feel that it's because, uh, you know, kind of like the pharmaceutical companies, right? Mm -hmm. Um, growing up, you're taught if your head hurts, have a pill of Tylenol, right? Don't, uh, but they never teach you have a good diet, do this, exercise, do this, um, and you won't really have to worry about so many of these getting sick every year or whatever, right? That sounds like sounds like our government. Don't don't take care of yourself. Don't get healthier. Just go get this shot. Wear a mask, and you'll and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, and, and so that's the same thing with the meat industry. Is you really look at it, they're only behind the tobacco and the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical industry in the U.S. So this is also another misconception, right? This is another thing that people immediately think of, soy, estrogen, right? That's where a lot of people make that link. Oh, you can't have soy because you're going to boost your estrogen levels. Um, do you know what that study is based off of? I, I have no idea. My, my, my assumption of soy was, or my understanding as, of it as of lately is that there's very, very high quality sources and very, very poor quality soy so, sources <laughs> of well, say that 10 times fast. But before even saying that, people don't realize the continent of Asia at one point relied mainly on soybeans to live, okay? Mm -hmm. And then that, that misconception of estrogens and soy and everything, well, it's only linked to one study uh, <laughs> of this guy who... I think was drinking 10 to 12 gallons of soy milk a day. Okay. 10 to 12 gallons of soy milk a day in the military. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody that would go to the extreme. <laughs> I know I can't and I'm vegetarian. <laughs> um, but he was going at the so much far extreme. Of course, your body is going to have some type of negative reaction to it, right? You could die from drinking too much water for God's sake right? Like there's only so much your body can regulate anything. And so people have been linking soy to estrogen ever since because soy is made for plants. Plants contain phytoestrogen. Phytoestrogen, people will need to completely read upon. Estrogen, phytoestrogen are not the same thing. In fact, uh, I think it was like one nanogram of estrogen is like thousands, thousands of micro nanograms of phytoestrogen. So you will literally have to be going to the far extreme, which I'm sure your body can't even take because you'll probably be throwing up or something to produce estrogen like that. So what you really have to do is like, you have to just really open your own mind, try out your own things. Cause ever since I made that fix to my diet, it's been different, right? And so, and so it's, uh, I've really created everything that I've done by myself, right? So my, my tofu that I eat <clears throat> is from Sprouts. It's organic and it's, dude, this one block. Hey, and, and to be honest, bro, I, I'm with you on the tofu. I, I, I love me some tofu. No, this this one tofu. I mean, there's good and bad tofu too, right? There, like you were talking about the quality. There's like this really watery one. I'll, I'll take a, I'll, I'll take a good tofu over a bad steak. 
<laughs> I'll, 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 take, I'll take it over a well-cooked steak. I will not eat a well-cooked steak. I can't. Well, I can't relate to that, but yeah, I'll take your not. word for it. But but see, the, the thing is, like, you have to really uh, kind of hunt or explore your idea or your, you know, sources first, kind of really study up on it and then create your own diet. So for me, my tofu that I get from Sprouts, I don't know if they have that up in Washington. Yeah, we do have Sprouts. Yeah, I, I love that so, place. I, I used to get my purple sweet potatoes there. So if you go there, they have this organic Sprout brand uh, tofu there, right? It's high protein, super firm, doesn't have a lot of water. So it's easy to cut into cubes. And, 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 and this is the other thing, like people are like, how do you make your tofu? It's like, okay, well, you know, uh, most of the things you enjoy about the meat isn't really the meat, it's the seasoning that the meat comes with, right? Like, that's why a lot of people, when they eat the unseasoned chicken, just by boiling, they'll be like, oh, this is rubber, right? Yeah, not like, if you make steak the way I make it. It's, it's, just, it's, but, it's, it's grass fed. I pound the shit out of it and it's, and it's, well, yours, yeah, it's yours is, but. yours is different. And, but I mean, it's like the generic meat. A lot of people uh, really like the seasoning and the way it feels <laughs> with the seasoning whatever however you cook your chicken with the seasoning just do the same thing with the with the tofu and i guarantee you like it's going to taste really good what are the macros and, like on it like is there is there fat and carbs on so, it? yeah so i was going to tell you about that um actually let me tell you exactly what the carbs are so this block of tofu dude uh that they sell at the sprouts um you could get it for i think it's like two dollars a pack right mm -hmm. and yeah. this one pack is six 650 calories because it has 10 gram carbs 35 gram fat 70 gram protein and that makes when you cook it makes like two three meals that's keto then yeah it's very low in carbs and so in general is very low in carbs it's just how you make it um you know, you know what? Versus... okay dude i'm making a I'm, I'm making a note right now i'm gonna get tofu i, I, I literally yeah just because it, it, the way you're try. it it sounds good I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna try it yeah try try the the sprouts one i told you because i really like the fact that it's it's uh firm and it's very firm and it absorbs anything you throw in there really good i i mix mine i i don't do keto um, but I mix mine with sweet yeah, as, potatoes. As, as, a, as a vegetarian, I think that's one thing that you just flat out can't do. I don't know how it's even remotely possible. I actually have. Yeah. I have done keto in the past. Um, it's it's not very hard because, like I said, it's tofu is very low. I I mean, I probably can't get to single digits, but I've I've tried diets where I kept my carbs below 40, 40 grams. That or total? Huh? Net or total? Uh, no, total. Oh, wow. Okay. Total 40, because all I did was basically, instead of adding sweet potatoes, I added more green bell peppers. I added more spinach or whatever it may be, just yeah. a lot more vegetables okay. that are very, very low in carbs, you know, and, and increase the volume and uh, just have that. And then I have this thing, black bean spaghetti, right? I ordered it off of Amazon. It's like mm -hmm. six packs. Yeah, we do. Uh, man, those things are and those things are stupid low in carbs. It's like, how is that even possible? There's, there's, there's like literally <clears throat> much of them as you want. <laughs> well, the the black bean pasta that I get is twenty. It's two two ounces, right? And so that two ounces is uh, twenty five gram protein, zero gram fat, and I think it's seventeen gram carbs. But the thing is, that mixes so much well with my diet, but. You see my point though, like I mix and match so much stuff, like where I enjoy my diet and my macros are great. I mean, obviously I'm getting results, so they're working. And so being a vegetarian is hard at the beginning because you really have to find the foods that you can find. Um, but then once you find it, it's also very much easier because you could get started on this routine and you don't have to worry about, you know, doing this, doing that when it's just very much the same thing. Mm -hmm. So um, it's being vegetarian. It's I don't feel like it's hard now. Obviously, at the beginning, when I was trying to explore all these foods because of all the misconceptions I read online, because when I read stuff about tofu, hell yeah, I was scared. I was like, man, like, I don't want 
estrogen you know i don't want um moobs <laughs> you know i want to turn into a woman <laughs> yeah uh, I, I don't want any of that and then and i'm like you know what man well, I better, edit, whole... better edit that you got to be careful saying that today huh yeah yeah that's true that's true <laughs> But but that's my that that's that's the thing, man. It's it's a lot of exploration, and it, it's just funny that there's a stigmatization to people that don't eat meat. It's like the same stigmatization um, people have, man. Like if you were to get on testosterone, you could do so much better, right? That that's it, and without them really knowing, like you could get on testosterone and still not look any different, still not feel any different, right? And so it's, a, it's the same thing when it comes to this. It's just like, you can't guarantee anything. And it's just funny when people mention thing, oh man, you know, only if you ate meat. And I'm like, okay. But I'm also like eating my vegetarian food. I, you know, I feel confident that I'm at least as strong as anybody else in the gym. I'm, uh, you know, some people may be bigger. I was shocked that you're hitting your macros, actually. I was like, I, I don't I don't know how you're going to do it. And the way you're explaining it to me, I'm like, wow, okay, yeah, you, you're, you're making it work. And I get the same thing, too. People are like, oh, man, like, imagine if you ate carbs, because I haven't eaten carbs. Yeah. You know, over, over exactly. Year now. They're like, imagine That's if you true. ate carbs. And I'm, and I'm like, <clears throat> I eat so much protein that it gets turned into carbs anyway. It's just, it's, it's just, it's just a matter, it's just a matter of how I get it. Like, believe me, like my glycogen stores are full and I just love the way I feel like, look like sex yeah. hormones, um, sleep, strength, just cognitive ability. I mean, I love it. And I think what you and I have in common is we have, is we, is we, we train hard. I mean, that's honest, like none of this works if you're not training and if you're, yep. if you're training smart, you know exactly what you're doing, you know? Yeah with a coach and hit and hitting your macros. I mean, really that's like 80 to 90% of it right there. Yep. Yep. Fully agree. What about, um, what about B vitamins? Do you, do you supplement those? Like how do you get your B vitamins? Uh, yeah. I mean, even, uh, well, the tofu that I get is very high in iron and it is high in, um, in, in, in minerals and essentially including vitamin B. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, I, regardless of what I eat and regardless of what anyone eats, I always recommend people taking vitamins anyways, because, you know, even if it you're hurts. getting any from your food, you could probably always use more. Um, so yeah, I do supplement, I take, uh, Optimum by Optimum Nutrition and I, you know, eat three pills a day with my meals and, but yeah, obviously like minerals are to me more important than macros so yeah um zinc are you concerned about zinc levels at all i know that's hard hard to get on a plant-based diet <clears throat> zinc yeah so the optimum nutrition brand i get mm -hmm. for vitamins it's uh it's a complex so it has all that in there oh, zinc, yeah, say something like that too. yeah <clears throat> um carn carnitine that's a, that's a, that's, that's a, very important for brain health, very important for burning, um, nutrient partitioning. Is that something that you supplemented? Uh, quarantine, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. I don't think I really, uh, looked or have been concerned with that at all. Um, because I feel like, uh, the brain and everything is so much more complex that it's not just a matter of one mineral or to, you know, as a mixture of a lot of things. Um, I'm sure I get, you know, enough from the minerals or supplementation or even the foods I eat. Uh, I haven't really looked too much into that. Yeah. So I, I, I can't, you know, tell you anything. Yeah. Um, and then taurine too. I know that's one of the, that's one of the other things. Like the, the, these are all nutrients that are very abundant in red meat, which is why I love eating steak so much. And so um, tar, taurine, is that something? Taurine, tol yeah, taurine. Yeah, I think that a lot of that stuff comes in uh, supplementation, like protein powders and all that stuff, anyways. Or even in pre workout. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Monsters, they got they got my taurine. Lo love my monsters. I not not a huge fan of what the this this is this is, a, this is actually a very um, like evil evil symbol that's on, that's on this label too. I don't know if you know the history of it, but uh, 
not a fan, not a fan of the company, but man, it's a good product though. It's a good joke and it tastes good. Yeah, man, I'm not I'm not so much concerned about things like that, because like I said, if I it would be one thing if I wasn't getting the results I wanted, you know, <laughs> then I'd be like, man, I, I need to see what is up. Yeah. Um, My health has been good. My training has been great. My uh, body composition has been really good. So I try not to get too crazy with the complexity uh, of it all. And, uh, again, I have full trust in my coach with, you know, the, everything he's been telling me. So we're good on that front. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> What's, uh, so, so like if, if you could summarize it and real quick, like 30 <clears throat> seconds, uh, first meal, second meal, third meal, fourth meal, fifth meal, um, what's that look like on a typical day for you? You train in the yeah. afternoons, right? Yeah. So I play around with my meals a lot. I, um, you know, try to switch it up if I can. But most recently, what I've been doing is my first meal uh, is not when I wake up. And it's usually probably three, four hours in, not because I'm trying to intermittent fast, but I just don't feel hungry until I get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I my first meal is I get this uh, pre-made meal, um, you know, one of those frozen ones, uh, the healthy choice packets you could get from Walmart. Mm -hmm mainly because I go to work man. early in the morning. I don't have time to cook so much. What do you do um, for work? Huh? What do, you, what do you do for work? So I work at a, as a uh, air quality specialist at the oh, Valley okay. District. So um, I'm there by seven. So because I already make my black bean spaghetti and my tofu and everything, uh, you know, hand cooked in the morning. So a lot of other stuff uh, that I don't have time for, I grab to that, you know, fits my diet. So I grab uh, this uh, one um, thing is by Healthy Choice and it's called like a Chipotle protein bowl or something like that. And so that'll be my first meal and I'll put some uh, fat-free mozzarella cheese on it because that's literally just protein, no fat, no carb, just literally protein. Mm -hmm. That's like 50, it's like, no, it's like 80 calories and it's like, uh, you know, 20 grams. Even, no, even normal mozzarella cheese is only a couple grams of fat anyway so no. yeah I, I just I, it's just because I'm, I'm trying to keep I'm still trying to keep control of my calories I'm not trying to go so fast up um so I just use low uh, fat-free mozzarella on top of that and then I eat it at nine and then lunchtime I have um my black bean spaghetti with uh these uh patties um the protein patties that uh, I also buy that are pre so the, those are the only two pre pre made meals I purchase for my day. Everything else is cooked by me, and that's just because they're already high in protein, and I don't have time to make it <laughs> so much of the way they make it. Um, so I eat that as my secondary meal, but I always make sure that each meal that I have has at least forty grams of protein. You know, um, nice. and so uh, that's my main concern. The fat and carbs, they can always go up and down. It's the protein that's the most necessary for me. And so uh, my second meal, like I said, the black bean spaghetti, I'll have that with the patties uh, with some ketchup on it because ketchup makes everything better. Uh, <laughs> Sugar free then, ketchup? No, man, I, I stick with the real thing. I'm like, really? I, I like the sugar free ketchup. I, I'm sure I don't, I wouldn't mind it, but it's just, for me, it's just a matter of few calories that I can still put. So I'm like, okay, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll it. Um, and then my third meal would be my pre-workout meal. Um, it's what I'll have probably around, no, I'm sorry. My third meal is uh, some of the tofu uh, that I make in the morning with the green bell peppers with, uh, you know, the sweet potatoes. I'll have a little bit of that. Uh, around two o'clock and then around four o'clock I'll have high carb meal with uh, you know a single scoop of protein shake for as a pre-workout meal so I'll have like mangoes and I'll have uh, grapes those are my two favorite fruits mm -hmm. um, and then I'll go train following my training session I'll have two scoop of the protein right with a banana and then I'll drive home um, once I get home, then I'll have my biggest meal is my dinner. 
uh, in terms of total calories, but mm -hmm. because uh, uh, my body just responds better that way because I feel when I wake up, I feel energized, right? Like mm -hmm. my body's ready to go. And so my- I'm, I'm saying like to you, I gotta have a big meal before I go to bed. And if anything too, it's just like, sorry, yeah, for, it's, 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 a, it's a mental thing too. It's like, yeah. if, I, if I eat that much food, earlier in the day like i'm just going to be sluggish the rest of the day so this yeah it gives it gives me something to look forward to and i almost like just being not like a super empty stomach but um just maybe like a like a like a little hungry it just gives me a little bit of an edge and it kind of keeps me like on my toes yeah. day and more productive yeah and even when you're like after your training right you're super hungry so it's like when you eat that big meal you feel satisfied so my last meal would be mm -hmm. Uh, the rest of that tofu recipe, uh, along with uh, a cup of rice and um, one packet of oatmeal that I mix with cinnamon, mm -hmm. and then that'll be it. That, that'll you're, be not, my... you're not concerned about the fat and the the fat from the soy um, for, for, from the tofu and the rice uh, together in, in the same meal. I know a lot of people get real finicky about having carbs and fats at the same time. No, and I think it's just because what people don't understand is like again it comes down to how your body breaks down right like your body has three types of enzymes for a reason okay like one to break down the protein one to break down the fat one to break down the carbs there is like no uh no problem if you just have like them together or separately because they're all going to get digested the same way, but they're going to get digested by a different enzyme. So at the end of the day, and this is the other misconception I think a lot of people have is like, they'll be like, oh, you know, I ate so many carbs and I'm ready to like rip this workout. And it's really, it's like, you have the mental satisfaction. And yes, some of that energy is because of what you just ate, but most of what you just ate isn't really going to be stored as glycogen in, in your body until you go to sleep. So you get what I mean? Like mm -hmm. whatever you eat at night, if you're in a calorie surplus, you're going to gain weight regardless. If you're in a calorie deficit, you're going to lose weight regardless, right? Um, your body recovers when you're sleeping. And that's also when it digests everything you ate throughout the day is when you're sleeping. So you can't just be like, man, that pizza I had like an hour before, whew, like I'm ready to kill it. No, in fact, the pizza you had an hour before is probably why you're going to have a shitty workout because you're going to feel bloated. You're going to feel full. Why? Because it's not digested yet. It's still sitting yeah. in your stomach. And yeah, I, found out the, I found that out the hard way in high school. Before having a big <laughs> hockey game, I was like, wait, pizza has carbs in it, right? Okay, I'm going to eat a whole pizza. Yeah, no. I don't bring a pizza man to this. My Saturday, two large pizzas every Saturday. Oh man. <laughs> every Saturday, huh? That that's that's my favorite. Uh wow. I, it's and it's uh it's just um I don't know, it it keeps me driven for the rest of the week. Like yeah. gives me something to work up to. Gives you um, something to look forward to, yeah. And I'm I'm very much of a person that uh, I guess you can say robotic, like I'm very much scheduled, right? You got to be if you're a bodybuilder, man. You can't wing this. But, but the thing is, even with my cheat meal, like I know I'll enjoy that pizza. Like you want me to risk it to go get a burger or something elsewhere that I may not enjoy. I don't know. I only get one day a week. <laughs> I know that's a, dude. I, I never eat out ever. I mean, part of it's because we have kids and, and so I could see like not even worth it to go eat out anyway, but it's like, man, like I can make a steak taste 10 times better at my own house. And, and, I, and I don't have to put up with the waitress's attitude. And like, and I'd have to explain that to tell them 10 times how rare I want it. And then they can, they come back and it's overcooked. And I'm like, are you like, are you kidding me? And it comes cost an arm and a leg to do that like we go broke fast if we eat out you know we can go to the restaurant supply store and get it for yeah i but yeah, it's good meat yeah exactly so it's like pizza is safe i like it i know what i'm getting i'm going to get that it's hard to mess up a pizza and it's mentally satisfying to me and if pizza's not your thing maybe burger is your thing go ahead and get that now 
I don't recommend that to everyone. I mentioned I grew up a fat kid, so I have a fat yeah. kid's appetite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so eating two pizzas for me is no biggie. And it, I, even if I wake up tomorrow six, seven pounds heavier of the water by next Friday, I'm back to the same weight as I was last Friday, right? Yeah. Because my body is able to regulate back to it, what exactly, it was because yeah, the great. rest of my diet, mm-hmm. because the rest of my diet is consistent. And what you're doing is very, very good for your thyroid too. It's very good for your TNT levels. It's very good for your metabolism. You know, you see so many of these, uh, so many of these amateur bodybuilders that do these non-drug tested shows, and they're and they're, and they and, and everybody uses T3 as this as as a as a cutting agent. And I'm like, just because it's a drug it doesn't mean you have to take it. It doesn't mean that it's going to be better than just doing it naturally. Like you can, yeah. you can, you can boost your T3 by eating a pizza, you know, and it's, and it's not gonna, it's not going to throw you off the diet. Like for me, it will, because I, I because I have, you're a, so depleted on carbs. That well, and, I, and gonna... I have, and I have a thing with carbs too. I'm very open about this. If, if I, if I start eating carbs, I can't stop. And so the best, one of the best decisions I ever made for my life was just to eliminate carbs together and so i just eat steak it's satisfying and well i'm satisfied when i'm when i'm done it doesn't matter how many carbs i eat and how much fiber i have i just want more and more and more and i get sicker and sicker and sicker and so it's a it's a, it's a yeah. just cycle it's just something with like how i'm wired or something the what the way i was brought up whatever that's a different that's a different topic different yeah. podcast but um if yeah you- and 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 i can relate to that too is like um my saturdays are my carb days where I don't I'm not so stressed about yeah you have a limit my calories are because the rest of the week I'm free so even if it's not two pizzas on a Saturday maybe that day I'll have one pizza on during dinner time and I'll have like donuts in the morning or I'll have a burger in the afternoon the thing the point of it is when I have that day I'm not worried about the calorie intake what I'm worried about or not worried about what I'm looking at is the satisfaction. Now, the thing is, I'm not going to, I'm never going to push it to the point where like my body's about to blow up, right? Like where my stomach is just like, wants me to stop. I'm not trying to do that, but I'm trying to get to the point where, okay, I feel full now. All right. That day is done. Right. So if that takes a pizza and donuts or a burger or a mixture of all three, or just pizza, two large pizzas instead of those three things, and I'll have something else. The only thing I keep track of that day, did I meet my protein goal? Yes. Don't worry about the rest of the macros because we're back to square one tomorrow. And as long as you're making progress and you're training and how you look, you're good. And you're probably so, a beast in the gym the next day. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so that's all, that's all. That, that's part, yeah. And that's part of how you can build muscle on a calorie deficit too, is, is, is this like you diet, 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 refeed. So per, personally I do, I'm, I'm, I'm keto throughout the week. I'll do a protein refeed. So my protein is sky, like sky high, like 400 grams. So I really, really fill out. And then I hit all my big lifts the next day after that. And I can hit the eight to 12 rep rate <clears throat> I do on keto very well. And then throughout the rest of the week, I'm, 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 I'm in ketosis and my lifts aren't really the great, but I have so many ketones that those are very anti-catabolic. And so I'm able to hold that muscle mass and burn fat. And then Saturday comes, boom, protein refeed again, hit all the big lifts and you gain a lot of muscle with those protein refeeds. So yeah, yeah. having a, having, having one day a week where you're in a calorie surplus, like it doesn't make sense mathematically because, because that, that one variable day, like your calories could be could, could be way more to where like on average, you're actually not really at a calorie deficit, but it doesn't matter because what that does for you hormonally, it gives you something to look forward to. It helps you stay on your diet better. Um, it, 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 it produces cell- serotonin, which produces melatonin, which is going to make you sleep better. And yeah. you got to factor in all these other things besides just the math and what's happening on paper. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's important. I think, I think everybody has to do that for themselves. So yeah. You're dieting, man. Like you can't just be in a chronic calorie deficit all the time. Talk. Exactly. You can, you, you, if you're going on a diet, you should really focus on it doesn't meet your lifestyle because that's what's going to matter. Are you going to be able to keep that diet or not? So, so yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, it's been, it's been a freaking awesome talk time talking to you, bro. This is, yeah. 
This has been a treat. This is this is a this is a big pleasure. I've been looking forward to this conversation for a while. I know you're 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 a busy guy. I really respect your time um, and your cognitive. This this soon still coming out of the competition. So hey, I have respect for you for even being on the show. <laughs> no, no, I appreciate you having me, Colt. Um, happy what you and your wife are doing. You guys are making great positive changes to people, um, as well as yourselves, uh, keeping each other accountable. That's you know that's. Uh, a lot of people can't say that. So that's definitely something you guys should be proud of. And uh, thank you for having me on here. Um, and maybe once again, we'll, we'll meet up on here and eventually, hopefully we can meet up on stage again. I hope so. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that that Fresno show of, of Terry Reeves, that one, I don't know if I'll be, I probably won't be at that one, but, um, but I might be having some competitors there. So. Yeah. Yeah. You come down here and uh, I'll show you, but, uh, I mean, for anyone else that's looking for, you know, updates, I am going to be providing like a lot of stuff like this, where it's a lot of uh, people, uh, it's a lot of things that people are unaware of, right? Like the whole vegetarian diet aspect and everything on my channel, uh, Manny Sink Fitness on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, I actually plan to release my first video, uh, which is just going to be a little bit of a physique update. Uh, I'm going to call it a week zero type of thing. You know, this is the starting point and then continue to build off there, but also provide some like educational things like, you know, for example, like how gym helps with anxiety and stuff, other things like that, that I feel like is very much overlooked um, that I want to explore. So, so yeah, um, more opportunities coming up on there as well. Great. Yeah. I think this last half hour too has been particularly inspiring to a lot of people that just flat out don't want to eat meat. They just don't, don't like it. Don't they, 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 they refuse to, or have some sort of reason why they don't want to. And uh, I mean, this is, this is, this is, this is a resource for them. And I think that your testimony is, is, is a way to do it, not be a douchebag about it and, and, and do it in, in, a, in a way that's sustainable and that works and that's healthy. And um, I learned a lot, man. I really did. So I'm glad that we were able to, to dive, to dive into that. Love the way that you explained everything. You've really, you've really done your homework and your science. And hey, man, um, hat off to your coach too. I mean, what a guy. This is somebody that I'd really like to meet. So, yeah, yeah, most definitely, brother. You have a um, you have a great future ahead of you. So, just keep at it, man. Thanks. You too, my brother. I love you. And uh, we'll be talking. We'll be talking soon. Seeing each other on stage at some point. Yes, sir. I'll see you next time, brother. Thank you listeners for joining us on this episode. If you found this helpful or entertaining, we ask if you would please share this with a friend. We also would love to hear what you think of our show. So any ratings or reviews are very much appreciated. We have a new episode every Saturday morning. So please subscribe so you don't miss them. Thank you again and God bless.